Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I am coming back at you with another Wargaming in Miniature video. In today's video, we're going to continue on with our What's in the Box series. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Plastic Soldier Company's British Paratrooper Heavy Weapons, uh, 15 millimeter. In this box, you're going to get 64 figures and 16 models. I think the models they're talking about are mortars, machine guns, and anti-tank guns. Uh, but yeah, you get quite a bit in this box. Let's take a look at the back of the box. Uh, one thing I like about the Plastic Soldier Company's uh, boxes, they have like a little painting guide uh, for all their different units, and they uh, give you the Vallejo paints that you should use to paint up your troops. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. It even tells you if you use the Army Painter uh, or the Plastic Soldier primers, or if you get the um, their paint sets, which ones to use. Uh, I think it's I think it's pretty cool. Uh, and then it tells you like the boots are this color, the weapons are this color, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and they, they're in partnership, I believe, with Vallejo because they really tell you a lot about Vallejo. Now, uh, these boxes, before I open it up, this box is one of many of the Plastic Soldier Company World War II boxes. It's designed to be compatible with a rule set called Battle Group. Uh, I personally play Battle Group but we're not really here to talk about rules or rules comparisons or anything like that. That's a subject of another video. I just want to say that these boxes are set up to be compatible with the army lists that you find in Battle Group. This box says uh, you should receive three, I'm sorry, four three inch mortars and four four inch mortars right uh, you should all also receive four Vickers medium machine guns and four flamethrowers and four six pounders uh, that's a lot of heavy weapons okay so let's open this up and actually see what kind of stuff we get inside the box all right, the first thing you get is an instruction manual or uh, kind of a, a visual guide. Remember the four inch mortar, the 81 millimeter mortar, which is the three inch mortar. And then you've got the six pounder gun and you have the Vickers medium machine gun. Uh, these are color coded uh, so that when you're looking at the sprues, you can see the colors and which ones are which. Like the red ones here should be for the medium machine gun. Uh, red is for the medium machine gun. Blue for the uh, 81 millimeter mortar. So you know that these guys and these guys are for the 81 millimeter mortar. This is for, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and uh, I think that's pretty good and it also it doesn't really show you how to assemble it but you have a pr it should be self-explanatory there's not a whole lot of parts um, okay now when you're looking at the sprues this is a hard plastic sprue uh, there you get four identical sprues and there is so you get exactly four of everything that allows you to make four of those you know each of those special weapons or what have you there are no bases in this box uh, bases is left up to the individual players uh, the game battle group is what this is designed for and battle group is a man-to-man -man game and it's supposed your figures should be individually based uh, I personally do play Battle Group in 15 millimeter, and I feel that multi bases 
like the Flames of War bases work best for me because uh, it I like to play larger battles and it's easier to move figures around uh, when they're mounted multiple on a base. If they were individually based, uh, it would take a long time to move an entire battalion. But it, it, this game can be played as low as squad versus a squad, man to man. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at the models. Let's bring them up close so you can take a look. So let me adjust the zoom and I'll be right back. All right, so let's bring up one of these sprues. Let's start with the anti-tank gun. Uh, remember, you get the one solid piece here with the uh, the legs and the trunnion. You get your wheels, you get your base plate and your gun shield, and then they provide two different guns. One is, uh, I believe, the 57 millimeter, and one is the six pounder. So for the British, you would you be using the six pounder? Uh, yeah, and so that's I do believe that's the way it is. Um, even though these are all this is a British sprue, maybe there's two styles. Uh, maybe there's an early war six pounder and a late war six pounder. That might be what it is. Uh, you get a few extra shells. So if you wanted to just lay them around a, a, a figure base, you can do that. Uh, the mortar here, right? Mortar uh, is, this is the four inch mortar with its bipod. And then you've got some mortar rounds in a box here. I don't think that's for the anti-tank gun. Uh, it might be though. Because that doesn't look like a mortar round. That looks like an anti-tank gun round. So, yeah. Uh, and then if we flip it over, whoosh, you've got your smaller mortar. Now, this mortar looks like it could serve as a light mortar as well. It could be a two-inch mortar. It's not. It's. But it's, it's supposed to be the three-inch mortar. Uh, you can probably proxy it as a two inch mortar because it's about the same size as the Flames of War uh, light mortars as well. Um, you, you have a crew member here that uh, doesn't have any legs, uh, but then again, there is a bipod or tripod down here with legs and no torso, so he probably glues on to that right here you have a loader with his arms holding a box of ammunition feeding it into the machine gun you have this guy here which is probably the loader without his arms and then here is the machine gunner now the vickers which i think is a pretty cool feature they've got it as one piece uh, is water cooled and there is the water radiator that feeds the water up to the uh, coolant sleeve that goes around the machine gun to keep the barrel cool under heavy fire. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the anti-tank gun crew members. All right, we definitely got one here. He's definitely got an anti-tank gun shell. That shell is pretty large. That's much larger than, than that. Maybe that is a mortar shell. I don't know. Uh, this guy looks like he might be the gunner. And then you've got an officer pointing with binoculars in his hand. And then this guy is obviously a mortarman. He's got his hands over his ears. He doesn't want to lose his hearing. Uh, this guy's holding a shell for the mortar. And then this guy is shouting commands that's pretty nice now let's flip this over take a look this guy looks like he's an officer now he doesn't have a base uh, you'll notice that some of these have bases and these circles do or they are compatible with the flames of war pre-drilled 
uh, bases. So if you wanted to use those, you could fit those right down in there. But these guys don't have a base. So you would need to uh, provide them with provide him with a base uh, or put him on a multi base uh, in some way. Uh, this guy looks like a mortarman with uh, a, a shell where he's standing. So he's probably compatible with the four inch mortar. This guy looks like he's getting ready to tell someone to drop around. Uh, this guy's obviously trying to pres preserve his hearing. Now, this guy doesn't have any arms. Uh, but if you look right above him, you've got a set of... He's got a mortar shell, looks like. Let's see if I can get a good focus on that. Yeah, it looks like a, it's a guy dropping a mortar shell. So maybe he's... Uh, yeah, about to drop some rounds. A, a standing standing guy. All right. Uh, and then this guy right here is our flamethrower guy. So if you're making an, uh, an assault engineer squad, he would work really well with that. Uh, great for taking the Arnhem Bridge, right? They had flamethrowers. Yeah, uh, and these all look like they would be super easy to assemble. And they're pretty self-explanatory. There's not a whole lot of complexities. Uh, all right. All right, so with three of those sprues, you should be able to make uh, an anti-tank gun platoon of four guns. You should be able to make a mortar platoon of four guns uh, and a medium mortar platoon of four guns. You should also be able to make a, uh, a machine gun platoon of machine guns. So yeah, you're looking, or if you just want to make like heavy weapons, uh, there's a variety of, I'm, I'm not really familiar with the British Airborne support weapon uh, units in Flames of War, but uh, yeah, this is this is an excellent collection of guns, mortars, machine guns, and even a flamethrower for your uh, British Airborne Army that you might be designing or playing for a specific scenario, like Pegasus Bridge or um, the Arnhem Battles or something. All right, guys. Well, thanks for coming out and checking out this What's in the Box British Airborne Heavy Weapons uh, from Plastic Soldier Company. And uh, I am doing quite a bit of these videos. So if you want to check out some of my other videos, be sure to subscribe to the channel and check those out. And I think the next video I'm going to do is an American tank platoon. All right. I'll catch you in the next one.